What's going on, DMG Clan? Today I'm going to show you guys how to play Nintendo 3DS emulation on your PSP D3 gaming controller in 2023. I mean, for. I always forget what year it is. So let's learn some more because I have so much more for you in store. See what I did there? All right, so the first thing we need to do to actually connect our phone to our device is we need to hold down the B button on the actual BSP D3. We need to hold down the power button and let the light start flashing. Now on your Android device, you're gonna go to your Bluetooth settings. You're going to look for the one that says Xbox wireless controller, and then you're gonna click pair. Now mine says just wireless controller. It might say Xbox wireless controller. It depends on what version of the BSP D3 you have. And now we are fully connected. As you can see, the light has stopped. Now we're gonna just put our device into our actual BSP controller. Now that you have your device connected, we're going to navigate to the website linked below to get Lime 3DS. Now Lime 3DS is a version of what used to be Citra that has been in active development lately for playing 3DS games on your Android, Mac, Windows or even Linux computer so that we can continue on with living our dreams at that two to three or four X resolution of our childhood favorite games you see on the left hand side. Now, when you navigate down to the assets, there might be a drop down arrow for you to actually navigate into it. And you're going to click on the Android Universal APK. Now I've already downloaded this just to kind of quicken up this guide, but I've already downloaded this version as of today. And when you download it, it's going to be directly into your downloads folder. As you can see here, Lime 3DS 2111 Android Universal. You're gonna click it, click install, click open, and we're going to set it up. So let's just follow the prompts. Yes, it's got a nice little Lime icon. I think it's actually really cool. And we're gonna get started. Now, notifications, we can grant permissions for that if you want to, or you can turn it off. I like to keep my notifications off. Microphone, I leave it off. My camera, I leave it off. And then we're gonna select a user data folder. Now, what you're gonna do here is just select the folder. I have a folder that I'm going to create inside my emulation and folder. Now, right here is where I keep everything stored. And we're gonna create a folder here called Lime dash 3DS. And you can do it however you want. It doesn't have to be Lime-3DS, can be just Lime-3DS, it's up to you, but I like to keep it simple for my sake. Click OK, click Use This Folder, and click Allow. Now, in the future, if you decide that you want to transfer this folder to another device, for example, then you would just select that folder because all of your information will be saved in that folder, including your settings and all that kind of stuff. So kind of remember that. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is click Next, and you're going to add your games. Now, where you get games, that's up to you. I have my own games right here. So I have some games right here sitting here and then I have games that are still on my shelf that are located now because I've dumped them correctly using a 3DS inside my N3DS folder. So click use this folder, click allow, click next, click continue and then all of your games will load here. Now I don't know if I forgot to decrypt this game that's why it's still sitting there but i had a european version of this game and same with pokemon y i think i forgot to decrypt it properly and convert it to 3ds but all of these games are the games that i own and these are the only games that i have in my possession so that's why they're sitting on my device now we can actually just rotate our device and then go into settings and start configuring our settings the way we want. Now, general settings is just our speed limit. We don't need to touch that. If you have a lower end device, you can change certain settings in there, but you don't really need to. Your system settings, this is where you can change your username for your account. So mine is gonna be Mr. DNA. Oops, just like so. And yes, you can still use your touchscreen for all of this. Region, you can select whatever region you want. I'm just gonna keep it to auto. Language, auto, country. I'm gonna select my actual country and they did add more countries in here. So mine is Canada. My console ID. This is very important because your console ID is based off of your actual, actual console or fake console on your device. So for example, if you know how to look inside your folders on an actual 3DS, your console has an ID that it's given 
and that's what this is. So if you change this, it does actually tell you what happens here, then your information is going to be changed to like a different console. Now, my birth date and month is January 9th. I'm not gonna tell you my year. I've told you guys how old I am in the past, so whatever. Now, my gamepad settings. So you're actually gonna physically set up these gamepad settings, so these buttons, so that they match how you wanna play. So if you want your A to be down here and your B to be right here, then you can do that. But I like it the way that the game was actually rendered in the past. So A is my B button, B is my A button, and my X, oops, X is Y, and my Y is X. I know that's backwards, but that's how I like it. So start and select are right here. And my circle pad, which is my left one, is going to be up and down and left and right. So you just need to press the left and right. And then my C stick is gonna be up and left for axis 14, D pad up, and then left, that's all you need to do. And your triggers, L, R, Z, L is R2, or L2, and Z, R is R2. Now your hotkeys, we could do swap screen by clicking in on the left joystick and cycle through screens, click in on your right joystick. And that's really all about it with this controller because these buttons on the back, these are not extra buttons. These are just buttons that you can like change to another button, for example. So graphics are very important depending on your device. I have a very powerful device, so Vulkan does help with rendering the graphics very well. And with my device, which is a Snapdragon device, I can actually enable a graphics driver that does help a lot with rendering your games. Now, enabling shader generation, we're gonna keep that on. Enable synchronized shader compilation. I turn that on on the most part. And then for internal resolution. So the higher the resolution, the slower the performance, and highly unlikely any Android devices as of today will go up to 10x. So I like about 1200 by 720 or 3x resolution. It looks good to me. Linear filtering, this actually makes the screen look a little bit smoother. I'm going to turn that off. I like the kind of pixelated look to the game. Accurate multiplication uses more accurate multiplication hardware shaders, which may fix some graphical bugs, but the performance will be reduced when you turn this on. And they do tell you underneath what all of this does. Now, scale force, I like to turn that on. It makes the game look nice and crisp. And that is, again, dependent on your device. Now, the rest of this stuff, I don't really touch, and that's basically it that you need to touch. Again, if you find that your device is not utilizing the OpenGL graphics driver very well, switch it to Vulkan and then turn down your resolution a little bit, maybe to 1x resolution and turn off that scale force texture filter because that does kind of slow down the performance a little bit too. So go back, go to your audio. Now my audio input device that I select is QBEB and I find that QBEB actually helps a lot with the actual audio of the game. Now I'm not gonna tell you why or ask or explain why, but that's just what it does. Debug mode, new 3DS mode, I leave it on. And if you find that new 3DS mode does bug out or anything, just turn it off. But that's for games like Minecraft, for example. And everything else we don't really need to turn on or off. And that's about it. Now for your graphics, again, we can actually install graphics drivers, as you can see here in the main menu. So I'm gonna actually change this to install a graphics driver that I'm gonna supply in the description below a website for you to do that. So this is gonna be located in my firmware BIOS, switch files, and my graphics driver that I'm gonna be using is the latest one, which is R18 for my device. Make sure that you look up your device based off of whatever device you're using for this. Snapdragon devices, uh, this has got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. So this will be able to be utilized in this device. And everything else, well, that's basically it. So I'm going to jump into Donkey Kong Country Returns and I'm going to show you the next step here, which is just clicking the back button for a second and going to overlay options, turning off my overlay. And if you want to turn on your show FPS, you can do so by all means. Now we set up a feature on our screen and our controls to swap screens, which is really cool. So clicking the joystick in on the left hand side. And you can change the way that the layout is by clicking the right joystick. I like this layout personally, and that's how I like to do it. And it looks good to me. Now, it's very quick and easy just to swap screens back and forth while you're, you know, navigating through the menu to change whatever mode you want or whatever you're going to do here at the beginning of the game. But in the end, it is a nice emulator 
for playing backups of your Nintendo 3DS games in a higher resolution in 2024 because yes it does look really really good in this high resolution like this and when you go back and play it on your original 3ds you'll see what i mean as the game actually just does not look as crisp as it does right now on screen and yes again if you see that you have like little slowdowns here and there maybe turn on your different performance modes on your device because I have different performance modes on my device. As you can see, my frames are actually dropping a little bit on this device right now, which is kind of strange because, let's see, maybe I turn on my game mode, give my device a little bit more power, which is what I usually do. So I'm gonna search for Lime 3DS. And if you're wondering, this device is the Red Magic 8S Pro for anybody that wants to know and I do have a performance mode on this device where I can enable what is called a Diablo mode. And now I have what is turned on is Diablo mode and it cranks up my gigahertz to 3.36 gigahertz and allows me to play this game at an ultimate speed at full percentages so that it doesn't thermal throttle, it doesn't slow down. And as you can see, it's sitting at 100% right now and I'm able to play Nintendo 3DS emulation at a nice resolution that makes a lot more sense to us in 2024 on my bsp d3 gaming controller because that's what we're really here for is how to set this up using that have a nice day guys hope you enjoyed again if you find any resolutions slowing your device down or anything like that check to see if it has a performance mode like i do or if you have a rooted device you can you know put some modules on there for performance modes to get the full potential of playing your game, even though it's chewing up my battery life probably right now, using the BSP D3, what you guys call the $10 gaming controller in 2024. Hope you enjoyed, have a nice day, see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, I love you all. I'm gonna go game now on my BSP D3. Okay, no, I'm kidding, probably on my Odin too. I love you, bye-bye.